assistants Nick and Joe A surgeon reporter of his drone For the cassette that is our only home But in the meantime The play the greatest clips they It's Tuesday night. It's time for VCR Party, the show where we try to watch all 11,000 of the VHS tapes in our office. We're at like 42% now. I'm Joe. There's Nick. There's Steve. There's George. And hi, everybody. You're back home uh, in the office. Uh, Everything is right right. with the world. No plasma ball behind you. And we're we're ready to watch some tapes. It feels so good. And there's so much mail here. And we have so much unboxing to do, Nick. Like this weekend, we got to do it. There's so many tapes over there. I got some stuff to show off during nice things today. Uh, Yes, it's, it's, it's a good day in the office. All right. Well, let's dive right in with a found footage festival classic. You caught me with my pants down, but no one sells carpet or waterbeds for less. I don't know that uh, people who've been, a lot of people discovered the show in the pandemic. We actually started as a live touring show and we still do that. Uh, we got a big tour coming up, but um, we have about 15 years of backlogs. No, more than that. Almost 19 years of backlogged uh, material that we haven't shown off really in full on VCR party. You have to go back to our DVDs uh, to do that. However, each week we show a little bit of uh, some of the classics, and I wanted to show something because we're going to be in Pittsburgh uh, later this month. Uh, we haven't been back to Pittsburgh for a while, but uh, I think on the 23rd we're at a venue called Bottle Rocket, and we're going to be doing uh, a version of our Volume 10 show. That'll be the show we're touring with uh, in full this year. I'm and, stoked uh, because Pittsburgh is a city that we don't often get to. We had a theater mm-hmm. there for a little while. I think they went belly up, and then Bottle Rocket reached out to us, and it's like, yes, finally, a Pittsburgh yeah. place. So, yes, I'm stoked for that. It's well, a good we, city. Have, we have to show a video of uh, Pittsburgh's native son, Pudgy Wudgy, the Wonder Cat. This is a guy named Frank Furco, had a cat that he loved very much. He trained him and would get him on TV. And uh, he would be at Steelers games. And uh, when I think Pittsburgh, I think Pudgy Wudgy. So here's some highlights. Of Pudgy, Pudgy Wudgy would be at, at uh, Steelers yeah. games? Yep. Oh, Wearing wow. Steelers hats and everything in the parking lot. Yeah. With, with, Hi, the, with his owner or by himself? He would just come go by himself sometimes. <laughs> he can't afford two tickets. So, yeah. Right, right. Hi, tickets. everybody. Welcome to this video. Now coming towards us is Pudgy Wudgy, the Wonder Cat. Owner and trainer, Frank Furco of East Oakmont. On this tape, you'll see many of the tricks that Pudgy Wudgy does. Sì, ciao a tutti. Ciao, siete collegati al vivo con Pittsburgh. Io sono in compagnia di Frank Fulco. Ma la vera star dello show di oggi è Pudgy Wudgy, il gatto ufficialmente più elegante degli Stati Uniti. Frank is the proud owner of Pudgy Wudgy. Pudgy Wudgy is a cat. Think about President what could they possibly talk about on the episode of Maury? <laughs> what what was the discussion? <laughs> <laughs> they did a paternity test. Pudgy, is this animal the abuse? They made Pudgy take a lie detector test. We um, gotta find this whole episode of, or maybe yeah. it's like weird, weirdo pet owners. Is that maybe what the probably is? Okay. or talented and talented animals? Insane maniacs. <laughs> I, I can't imagine they gave like the entire hour episode to Pudgy Wudgy and Frank Furco. Uh, in in my heart, <laughs> they did. Um, yeah. Yeah, th- I should say this is a tape that Frank made. I think to try to get more bookings and to just pay tribute to uh, to Pudgy. Think about President Clinton. What do you think about President Clinton? Oh, I want you to hear a little more of that. What, what do you think about President Clinton? Oh, whoa, you almost fell off. Here, what do you think about Clinton? What do you think about Clinton? That a boy. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Wow. Go oh, strike. <laughs> Like but Mark Russell. Is, is, is Frank <laughs> not wearing a shirt? Yeah. yeah, he's. I don't know. You think if you're doing a video, maybe put a shirt on. But uh, we should add this to the calendar, the VCR party calendar. 7 30 p.m. August 14th, 1998. <laughs> oh, yeah. We should all be shirtless and play with an orange cat. Yeah, let's do it. And add bowl, it to the calendar. Bowl with an orange cat. I'm adding it to the calendar strike. now. But you made a strike. 
It's Pudgy Wudgy and the Two-Headed Teenager <laughs> coming to a newsstand near you in KD Country. I'm Dave Crawley. That cat didn't want to wear that. I disagree. I, yeah. I think Pudgy Wudgy looked very content <laughs> wearing that. Yeah. Well, we we played that clip. It's, he's uh, the subject of a documentary called, uh, I think it's called uh, Frank and the Wonder Cat documentary. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. It's really good. And we've had viewers send in, for example, here's uh, trading cards of Pudgy Wudgy. Uh, this is some, uh, I think somebody made some art of Pudgy Wudgy. It's usually wearing the the crown from that news mm -hmm. segment. And then last time, I think I was doing a college show in Pittsburgh, and I'm like, I'm going to go try to find the home of Pudgy Wudgy. Um, and it's in a town off the Pennsylvania Turnpike there. I think it's called Plum, Pennsylvania. And uh, I had a lead, and I, sure enough, I found a cat crossing home of Pudgy Wudgy. <laughs> that was Frank's home. Pudgy Wudgy had died uh, but uh, in 2001. But And then also, I was as I was driving out, a huge like mural. I was gonna say that's like photorealistic uh, oh. drawing of a cat. Yeah, yeah. well, I think <laughs> that they could, I think uh, Frank probably commissioned a uh, an actual artist to do this this amazing mural, which is still there. Frank uh, passed away uh, the last couple of years as well, but this mural is still there. So when we're in Pittsburgh, I'd like to go pay my respects uh, on the twenty third. Maybe we'll take a field trip after our show there. So I hope it's still there. I hope that mm -hmm. nobody's like bought out that place and, and painted over it because that's a that's a landmark. Yeah, we got to check. I, I just want to check and make sure somebody's taking care of that because it should be up there forever. And the crossing sign too. I think uh, just as important as the <laughs> crossing. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> more so. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that's Pudgy Wedgie Pittsburgh's. Uh, one of Pittsburgh's finest citizens. And uh, yeah, we hope to go see the Pudgy Wudgy, do the Pudgy Wudgy tour when we're in Pittsburgh uh, very soon. Hope to see you there. Yeah, for sure. Steve, who are you selling out to this week? Well, I'm glad you asked, Joe. Uh, this week, I am selling out to Sally Villarreal, who has been in the comments for as long as I have uh, been on the show. And I know she's been following you guys even longer. One of our greatest, biggest fans. And yeah. she is selling out for her fiance, Clayton, whose birthday is tomorrow, March 8th. And, uh, it is from Sally and Benito. Benito, you'll see in the. Uh, whoop, there we go. Right there. The. Um, but I hope Benito oh, okay. chipped in uh, his share. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to find out. Okay. But uh, you know, I know um, Clayton was uh, sent in. He was part of the Halloween costume with uh, Sean Marate. Marati. The per, you what, know. What he, did he dress up as? Um, they had the bunny eating the. Uh, the banana out of his ear. I forget what the uh, the video is. It was like one of those where it's like the secrets of behind to get good photos. Oh, boy. I'm really... I, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. I, I'm just, I have I'm no grasping idea what the hell you're talking the about. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to show you guys. Hold on one second. So, did right. Benito go Let's as... I... Okay, yeah, maybe this will jog our memories. I, I wonder if oh, Benito boy, went I'm... as... Uh, just Are you guys you seeing know, this? Uh, there we go. I remember this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's so right. So there's Clayton yes. there. Happy yeah, right. birthday, buddy. Yeah. I hope you're okay with us showing that picture again. <laughs> and from what I what I've gathered, I think that maybe Sally told us this, or maybe we heard it somehow. But I don't think Clayton really likes the show. I don't think <laughs> I that he's really I, like that into the show. I, you know, it's got to be growing on him because you know, obviously, he submitted there, and maybe I should cover up myself so you can see all the photos. But these uh, Sally and Benito sent in. Uh, but I, you know, I'd like to believe it's growing on him. So uh, let's hope. Let's hope that's the case. Maybe this is the episode here. Uh, yeah. You know, we got pudgy wudgy. We got yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a heavily animal based uh, episode. Yeah. So join Happy us, birthday. Clayton. Join <laughs> us. Happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, and thanks to Benito for putting up the funds for that. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, hey, I want to get into some celebrity bullshit. I got a fun one here for you. Old Bill, old Bill Raw Dog Moyers, they call him. Yeah. They always call him <laughs> old Bill, like the guy from PBS, Bill Raw Dog yeah. Moyers. That's a celebrity, Bill Moyers. <laughs> would you get a, Would you get his autograph if you saw it? <laughs> I'd skip. Would you Would you I'd get a selfie with him? No, uh, no, that would that, that one either. Okay, wouldn't recognize him in a crowd. Ditka, though? Ditka, you would, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all right, this one. Okay, so we don't normally do 
movies for celebrity bullshit. We usually do, you know, the and you know the training videos, the safety videos, stuff like that, uh, instructional videos. But this is a movie, and it's it's a what is it? The Oscars are this weekend, right? Yeah, coming up. Uh, yeah, yeah Tinseltown's so, Vegas night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I decided to do a movie here, and uh, this one is called uh, Little Bigfoot Two. It's from 1997. Have you seen it? It's like it's it's pretty Mac and Me like. It's very yeah. uh, it's got some elements of Mac and Me to it, and it has three celebrities in it. One of which is Bosley, Tom Bosley. I decided just to I I, I don't know who cares about. I mean, great actor and yeah, but I don't you know who cares right? There's two other actors in here, but look, isn't this weird that they put with Tom Bosley? As Rory Tasker, like, what does he give give his character name there? Like, what do we? What he do we has care? two minutes in that film, if that. Yeah, that's another reason I didn't include him was because I couldn't find him when I was skimming through it. So. <laughs> it was at some point there's there's a, like a deli line and somebody says, "Is Rory Tasker here?" <laughs> he raises his hand. That's the yeah, cameo. Right. That's now, it. I will say no. So I was looking for more Bigfoot footage after the uh, 2001 Bigfoot conference uh, Northwest. We had such a good. So I actually found that on eBay that tape and and ordered it. Had it at the, at home, brought it to the office, but I don't remember who the celebrities were. I just I I just glanced at the cover oh, and I was like, "This tape? Yeah, that tape. Yeah, it was still in the shrink wrap too. Did you get it still yeah. in the shrink? Yeah. Oh, okay. So right. I was wondering. Yeah. I I I I don't know who's in it, but you're, you're saying there's two celebrities we're supposed there's to guess. Two celebrities, and they're they're both uh teenage young teenagers. Um, they're both in sitcoms, pop very popular sitcoms. Okay. And uh, I think this is probably a big score for the producers to get these two uh, boys, like probably like mm. 13 year old boys in it. Um, one of them uh, is a, a friend of ours is friends with this guy. Hmm. So uh, one of them. So do you, two, two celebrities uh, from the 90s t sitcoms, popular sitcoms. Uh, name two uh, 13 year old boys in 1997 who were on. Oh, in 97. Yep. Oh. Hmm, that's later than uh, Steve George just blurted it out. Anybody? Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Okay. Uh, Urkel. Ooh, good guess. That's Jaleel, his name too, right? Contents Jaleel under pressure. White. Urkel. Uh, what about I'll, What about Ben Savage from Boy Meets World? Was that around this time? I like it. I like um, it. Yeah. That's uh, okay. Those. That's my only. Okay. Thing. There's there's that technically two, but um, that's hmm. fine. You guys can all just do one. Um, all right, uh, here we go. Uh, this week it's celebrity bullshit. Little Bigfoot two. Look at it. Peter Jackson. <laughs> he line be, produced it. Got to be the same one. There's no. <laughs> well, I. And I think, like, maybe, what was it, like, a, a couple years later, he did Lord of the Rings after right. he line produced. Yeah. After he line produced <laughs> it's amazing. For... This, this was a proof of concept of fantasy films. Yes, there, exactly. There were no, no fantasy films before this. No, he cut his teeth on this one, and then he, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, here we go. We're going to see a dramatic scene featuring our star. I had that meeting, and the brain, you should have reminded me. I did, three times. Wait a minute. Okay. Is that the kid from, not JTT, but the other kid who was in the video from a couple yep. weeks ago? Right. You should know his name by now. You should know his name. Three names. Uh, has, the name, has the name of an assassin. I know where he likes to go in Hawaii. Does that help? <laughs> yeah. John Wilkes Booth. Yep, that's yes. him. Yep. Uh, Tara Noah Smith. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the uh, the non-JTT kid from Home Improvement. Now we're going to see some of his acting chops here. He never got to have like scenes like this in Home Improvement. He was always in the background in Home Improvement. Here we go. We're too busy. You're always too busy. Kept looking at the door, hoping you'd come. But it never happened, Dad. Brian, I had to work. That's all you do is work on insurance policies. You have another job, too, you know. You're supposed to be a father. Shall we be careful? Okay, here's the other celebrity. Blurt it out when you when you realize who it is. Okay. Oh, oh, oh Roseanne, the kid from yep. Roseanne. Yep. Okay, but I need more details than that. <laughs> Mike, Michael Fishman. Was yes. that his name? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. I think he's uh, a truck, truck driver now. Yeah, Michael Fishman. Yeah. I think he's uh, like Roseanne again. I'm pretty sure it's DJ, DJ Tanner. Yeah. Was it a DJ? Yeah. Yeah, a DJ. DJ. yeah, yeah. DJ. What was her last name? <laughs> 
Wow, look at its fangs. <laughs> like, like, look at the lighting that's like covering up half of its face. <laughs> Heavy shadow there. Ah, just go with it. It's a, it's, it's a giant boom mic. Yeah, we, and it's like, <laughs> go ahead. Can we get a bounce in here? No. <laughs> okay. It's the first time you see the little Bigfoot too, and and <laughs> yeah, you're seeing half his face. You know what he looks like? A Sasquatch, a Bigfoot, a little Bigfoot. A little oh, Bigfoot big too. Too. <laughs> this is so cool. A little Bigfoot. They should have gone with T O O. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like the sounds it's making. Why isn't it eating? <laughs> a little too orgasmic. This is so cool. <laughs> like an obscene phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Why wasn't he eating the carrot either? I mean, he's just kind of holding on to it. Uh, they so, didn't have the budget to make him eat. Yeah. Um, wow, well, that makes me want to see the first one. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, we should, uh, maybe we should watch this for, uh, I don't know, if people want to. Do you want to do a movie? We haven't done a movie in a long time. That it might be, be fun. fun to, yeah, it's exactly 90 minutes long, so, you know, it's one of those exactly, yeah. exactly 90-minute movies. I said DJ Tanner, which is the other sitcom DJ from Full House. He was DJ Connor, Connor I believe, yeah. from right, right, right. Roseanne. Okay, yeah, yeah. got it. Yep. Uh, that's a good celebrity bullshit. I got a couple of movies I'm going to play during uh, Raviolis for the for Tinseltown's Biggest Night as well. Uh, but first, <laughs> let's get into this week at Scimitar. <laughs> Scimitar, our favorite special interest production company, because look, other people focus on movies most of the time. We cut our teeth on uh, on special interest tapes, and uh, no one was more prolific than Scimitar from uh, Minnesota. And I found a, a reel where they are promoting a lot of their releases that were available at Musicland and Sam Goody. And uh, this is one I haven't shown yet, um, but uh, it's a lot of fun. It has to do with softball. The Musicland Group is proud to present the Scimitar Video Sample Reel. See highlights from a few of the great special interest videos from Scimitar Entertainment. All available now at any Musicland, Sam Goody, Shop or Discount Record from, Store. Shoplifted from, shoplifted from, have it yet. Make a list. Scimitar Entertainment is about to show you a few of their best. Oh, we have this one. Yeah. This is uh, men who spend a lot of time on the toilet. Yes, exactly. So yeah, here's, here's, how, here's how they promoted it to potential uh, Sam Goody shoppers. Yeah. There are a thousand roads to Rome. There are a thousand ways to hit a softball, and not one of them is the only correct way. The main purpose of playing softball. Pretty cool trick, isn't it? Behind the back and then follow through on the pitch. Did you ever do that? You're a pitcher, Joe. Yeah, we, yeah, we do fun things like that. Yeah. Okay. For them is the only correct way. The main purpose of playing softball is to enjoy yourself and to it's help to you get do drunk. That, this tape has brought together five hitters. Just to and jack a home runs every single at bat. Many of these generally <laughs> accepted better ways to get to the top of the softball world. Our first oh. guest is Bill Gaddy, powerful, relentless yeah. in the pursuit of perfection, a student of the game. He can he jack makes him. Look easy. Does he spend a lot of time in the toilet? You bet. Rick Shear, physically gifted at six feet. You better believe he spends pounds. a lot of time in the, the toilet. The pretty much boils hitting down to practice. <laughs> he brings the whole Doug Sunday Brown, paper in. Whip, a bright new star in slow pitch softball, explains his theory of the art of hitting. Doug Flynn, 11 years, a Major League Baseball player. He is transferring his baseball. He might not look like he spends a lot of time in the toilet, game. but he does. <laughs> the answer will surprise you. For a change of pace. We'll hear how he pitched the books, a lot the of time in the toilet. Sluggers. Don Arndt, the old master. <laughs> oh, boy. The name says it all. Oh, it's a matter of slow Get comfortable, slugging. everybody. <laughs> it's a reason They're they don't getting... pan down. Each one will share with us. It's on the his toilet during that video. Game preparation <laughs> yeah. practice, psychological ploys, and a host of other things that go into becoming a top flight hitter or pitcher. Bill Getty explains his purpose. Look at it. Then it just faded out. That's how it was on the tape. Now take your list of great scimitar. Even the tape wasn't and interested. Head over to your Matt. local music land, Sam Goody, or discount record store. We'll have those yeah. movie releases and more in stock. And no and metal detectors. Nope. Just put it down your pants. And walk out the door <laughs> with confidence. 
<laughs> All right, that's this week at Scimitar. That's the promo for the uh, uh, power hitting softball. Uh, but another trope we like to celebrate each week is flying windows. When are we going to do the uh, the toilament? Remember we talked about like where we each take a guy who probably spends a lot of time on the toilet, and then we bring on a judge, <laughs> and then we have them go butt to butt to see uh-huh. who is going to to see who spends the most time on the toilet. According and to we're the judge. all on the toilet we... during it. <laughs> oh, we could be. Yeah, we could be. Yeah. So yeah. you're asking when we'll reach that new low in VCR party history? <laughs> uh, I'd say within a few months. <laughs> well, we got toe tapping tournament coming up, and okay. then uh, there's. Yeah, I think we got to do another who's the yellingest coming up, but mm-hmm. uh, and we just wrapped up a who's the kissingest uh, mm-hmm. last month. I so tongue touching tongue you meant. That, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And then uh, so now, yeah, I think we got to do maybe like June. Can we slate that for June? Sure. The toil- yeah, the we'll, toilet. We'll put it in the calendar. Yep. But we have a Discord that is uh, your privilege to join, chat, share, and be part of that community if you join our Patreon at any level. Uh, and uh, Sammy Parrot in the Discord shared this incredible commercial for a warehouse, where W H E R E, warehouse records. And this is going to cause some controversy. About whether they're flying windows or not, but I think it's good to stir the pot every once in a while. I mean, if you have to ask, it's probably not a flying window. Well, let's see. They they hit you right off the bat. Come to the warehouse and rent the hit movies you want when you want them with the warehouse movie rental guarantee. I mean, this is going to ultimately come down to our viewer, Wayney, who's the keeper and counter of flying windows, but... Are these windows? Come to the warehouse the and rent the hit movies you want when you want them with the. But they're window shaped. Warehouse movie rental guarantee. Yeah. This week, the warehouse guarantees you can rent big crocodile Dundee two and cocktail starring Tom. It's Cruise. one of those philosophical of questions. Available. We'll yeah, I was flying screens for just now. For one of these yeah, three hit movies, only the warehouse offers screens. you the movie rental guarantee. If Fine you want text. to rent these hit movies, they'll be at the warehouse, guaranteed. Where? The warehouse. That'd be a pretty good night right there with those three movies. That'd be a pretty good evening. Crocodile Dundee. Warehouse. What was that? Crocodile Dundee. Cocktail. Big, Cocktail. Big. And, big. and Big. Yeah. That's uh, pretty yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Pretty I don't think I've ever seen Cocktail. I haven't seen yeah, Cocktail. Either. I have um, to say. Oh, that's two. That's Dundee two. I don't know if I was Dundee two in New York. Yeah. Hmm. Didn't Home Home Alone do uh, two in New York too? Yeah, that might. That must have been the trend at the time. Yeah. 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 I don't know where Baby Geniuses two took place, but uh, some somebody get on that. Um, Jason takes Manhattan. Yeah, that's true. We're in New Uh, York. So are those flying windows? I mean, there is a shitload of flying VHS tapes that were window shaped, (laughs) but. You know, I don't know. We'll leave I'm that. I'm saying no. Or... I think I have a pretty liberal view of flying windows, and that to me was just flying VHS tapes. I'm going to say no, too, because it's not mm. called uh, This Week in Flying Windows Shaped Things. But It's Steve, called This Week in Flying Windows. You famously said bubbles were windows because there are windows to the ocean. That is true, but we were looking inside the bubbles to see something else. This one, we're just looking at a tape. If that tape is playing the movie inside, you might have ah, an argument there. But... Interesting. Okay. All right, I I might agree with you, and I might have to rescind that that flying window uh, intro, but uh, and I have to put it out we there. Can say, yeah, we can say whatever we want, but you're right. Wayne is the final arbiter of this. Well, mm-hmm. and what we do on the show is we apologize if we fuck something up. So, uh, <laughs> and well, so I'm just, maybe I'm next presenting week, a Nick. philosophical argument, and we'll see where Wayne comes down on it. So, yeah. Okay. All right, you're throwing Wayne under the bus on this one, then, huh? You, you're I'm, like I'm holding no my, responsibility. I'm putting my apology in her hands. So, Wayne. <laughs> Let us know, and if they are windows, count them. All right, let's get into some raviolis this week. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. People, by the way, have asked what uh, that ravioli is. It's from Stairway to Stardom, which is a you know a, a public access show in New York. We've featured a lot, and there was a comedian who said, how many Italians are in the audience? Show me your raviolis. And Joe, I think you had the idea instead of saying it was, a, we used to call the segment show and tell. And at some Boring. point, yeah, you said, 
Let's call it Trust Raviolis. Well, I think I said, Nick, why don't you show me your raviolis? And then oh, you, right. you laughed at it, but nobody else laughed at it. And then I was like, oh, I got to make a graphic for this. So then I made right. a graphic for it. Okay. And then, yeah. Every hundred or so episodes will explain what the jokes are. But Well, uh... you know, we have a that it done in this episode. If we get to it, if we don't go too oh. long, we'll get to a that it done because somebody has a question about the, you know, the credit sequence. Okay. Uh, it's good to go show. back so, and I think it's good. Yeah. yeah we, we have something called that it done. And if you have a question about anything on the show, send it in, put that it done in the subject line and we'll try to answer your question well joe uh you've been showing some clips well during the tongue touching tournament you showed uh, paul guadino and his wife who hosted a uh a, a exercise video series of exercise videos together and i see in the notes that you, you found more yeah i got another guadino here so yeah here it is this is a uh, so i think that he does these for like nursing homes you know and i think that mm -hmm. he has a we have this is our third one uh, it just showed up recently. He does it. He does uh, like sitting exercises, wheelchair exercises. And uh, but this guy's really ambitious. He's put out a lot of these videos. And um, let me just show the, the thing that he stuck out to me. The reason he stuck out to me was that he always kissed his wife at the beginning <laughs> and end of these two episodes or these two uh, VHS tapes that we had. And let's just recap that. Hello, everyone. Thanks for inviting us to your living room. Let me take this time to introduce my beautiful wife, Barbara. Hi, Dan. Before we begin, I'd like to introduce my beautiful wife, Barbara. Hi. Thank you, Barb. <laughs> thank you. And thank you people that are home for the workout. Okay, Barb, I really appreciate you coming today. Thank you for having me. Hello. I, I really appreciate you coming today. Like, like he didn't think she was going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Very um, far right. So we got we have a, a new Guadino, and I was so excited, so excited. I was like, "This is like a thing." He always kisses his wife at the beginning. And Barb, yeah. they, they share a smooch, and uh, it's a real moonlighting. Will they or won't they kind of thing? <laughs> Sam and Diane. Well, no, they have like fourteen kids. That, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, yeah. So, so they, 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 they will. Good. They will. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No mystery. But do they? The mystery is: Will they kiss on screen? Exactly. So uh, let's take a look. Here's the new Guadino video. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Gaudino, host of Gaudino. the Paul Gaudino Family Fitness Show. Welcome to my new improved chair Ooh, and wheelchair flying window. video. Flying windows, yeah. True I flying don't. windows. Whoa. <laughs> what, what is this doing here in the corner for flying windows? It wasn't even showing flying windows. What the hell's going on here? Hey, we got our corners mixed up. Because <laughs> See, I, I get why Clayton hates this show. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Clayton. Now, some important guidelines to follow before we begin. See your doctor get his or her okay and get a complete physical examination. Remember, Doctor, I'm about to do the Gaudino family your... workout. Um, can I just get the go-ahead? <laughs> look at that shot. I mean, look thumbnail? at that. Yeah, 100% thumbnail. Yeah, for sure. It, doesn't he have like... Don't you think like maybe he's like the younger version of Polly Walnuts from from uh, Sopranos? Like yeah, isn't mixed he like, with Liberace, I think. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of Liberace and uh, yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. This okay. Self, here's don't this. overdo, but yet do your best. Spread your feet real wide, hands on your knees, and cross. So up. there's no Barb. Barb Barb didn't show up. Hmm. And I watched the whole video. And without Barb, there's no reason to really watch it. <laughs> ah. um, she was but, the blue. I I included this scene here. Just keep your eye on the pillow here. Um, that, that's fine. <laughs> that should be a new corner. <laughs> keep your eye on the pillow. <laughs> okay, keep keep your eye on the pillow here. And uh, all right. hundred episodes later, we'll be explaining the context of that. <laughs> you think Clayton's, the pillow is, is, is Clayton still watching? Do you think or no? Or we could lose him. Uh, he's okay. shirtless with Benito. Yeah, he's taking okay. Benito for a walk. All right, here we go. <laughs> Like it's one. Watch this pillow. Two. This breathing the same way. Exhale. Inhale. See where this is going? Exhale. <laughs> Inhale. Uh, 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 oh. <laughs> and that's how you play. Keep your eye on the pillow. <laughs> if you saw a pillow fall, you kept your eye on the pillow. <laughs> okay, hold on. There's more. There's more. There's oh. more. There's more. It's pillow related. Hold on. Okay. That's it. Remember. Do the best you possibly can. Very good. Okay. Now we have a pillow here somewhere. Yep, we do. <laughs> so he he did he couldn't find it, but he found it eventually. Here. Right, now pro. Let's go to the okay, but look at mm. the pillow here. Yep. Now let's go to the chair. 
This time, what we're gonna do is work the ankles. Oh, oh, oh Jesus! Pick up the tennis spell. He didn't even give a shit. He did not even give a shit. He just like let it fall, and like that—that's what a bad, like, what kind of badass he is. He has like poly walnuts. <laughs> Out of my feet, I want you to go up on your toes and hold it there. Yo, Tom, you want go. me to, uh, <laughs> you me to whack Tom. this pillow? <laughs> you want us to dump this pillow, Tom? Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, doesn't he seem like, does, I mean, he has so many of these videos. It does feel like maybe he's like connected to like Tony. He's like, Tone, Tone, I got this idea for, mm -hmm. for a line of exercise videos. Please, <laughs> Tone, please listen to me, Tone. Well, I you can know. see why a guy that careless has uh, 12 kids, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I looked him up and because I wanted more of his videos. And he in, 19, in 2015, he was 80 years old. His email address was in this was in this uh, article about him moving to Florida. Uh, he's from Pennsylvania originally. And uh, he, he and Barb moved down to be close to the kids. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm just looking at the expressions on your faces right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> I believe you could see Clayton's expression at this point. Uh, anyway, live cam. long story short, his email address was on there. I zapped him off an email and uh, hope, hope to hear from him. Oh. So he'd be, he'd be uh, 88 now. I saw an obituary for him from 2020. Uh, uh, could, oh, really? Kiss, the kiss of death. Could be a different uh. Godino. Could be a different Paul Godino, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, but anyway, we'll, we'll see. I mean, but why would you be looking up Paul Gaudino if it wasn't him? I looked it up because we showed his clip. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Oh wait, here he is. Yep, Butler. Okay. Yep, Paul All Gaudino right. obituary, 2022, last year. Yeah, I think I announced that on the last show, but <gasps> last um, September. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That emails yeah i sent him an email well, today, so. oops well yeah, as we know uh tinsel town's biggest night is sunday so i'm, I'm previewing movies and uh we had a uh a, a preview tape that video stores would get you know uh, our friend worked at a video store and his mom would get all these um she owned the store he'd get all these preview tapes that were like at the beginning before the movie that you'd get to preview they would say here's why you should buy 80 copies of little marines 2 for ninety dollars a piece, what a racket it was at them at that time, because you're going to rent a shitload of these, and so they would kind of give you a little pitch reel. I think we showed one for an exercise tape called Body Beat before that we had. Oh, yeah. This one is for a movie called Little Monsters by um, Howie Mandel, Fred Savage, and um, I watched this while homesick one day in 1989 or 88, I think. And it's one of those things, like I rented Garbage Pail Kids, the movie one time while homesick, and I just, it made me sicker. And Little Monsters was the same way. The budget, it was just, just awful. I'm sure people have nostalgia for it, but they really get it the hard sell. If I were to describe Little Monsters in one word, I would say it was tough. It's funny. It was cool. Terrific. I thought Little Monsters was a great movie. This March, it's big raves for Little Monsters. Now available on video cassette. What do you say, bud? You ready? Maurice, I was born ready. In theatrical exit polls, this film was enthusiastically received by the 8 to 15 year old age group. There are 13 million VCR households with kids in this age bracket, creating a huge rental demand for this video cassette alone. Exactly. This age group has the influence. Is responding to him. Yep. Uh, Yo, you always pointed out that trope, like for promos for like syndicated Seinfeld, to be like yeah. airing at five and six thirty, and then it would be like Kramer being, "You better believe it, Jerry." You know, yeah, always... yeah, yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the most yeah. uninteresting editing technique. To like... is there a, is there a corner in that? Uh, responding, uh, responding to the narrator or something, <laughs> uh, a montage of responding to the narrator. It's mostly in TV promos, so I'm sure if we scrub through some of those old taped off the of TV yeah. things, we could find that. So yeah, Fred Savage was responding to that there. Let's right. Listen. Talking about VCR households. Video cassette alone. Exactly. This age group has the influence to generate over 20 million rentals. What do you mean? With such high expectations. On this release, it's not gonna do that. But... No, <laughs> they even like set themselves up for just playing that with such high expectations. With such high expectations on this release, make sure you have enough Little Monsters cassettes to satisfy this potential demand. 
Oh, you're pretty sharp. Here, you're, oh, you're ugly, but you're sharp. <laughs> Recent Lieberman research states that 88% of the target group surveyed gave Little Monsters a highly favorable rating. I thought it was a great movie. Because they don't have taste. Oh, window pane. <laughs> 75% like said they would tell their friends to see it. I'm gonna go tell all my friends to watch Little Monsters. <laughs> Me too. And 83% of parents rated Little Monsters good to excellent. Do they all look like you? Only the good-looking ones. Do kids have a gun held to them? <laughs> it was clearly... <laughs> they clearly had prompted them to say that. It looked like a hostage situation with those kids. Yeah, and I want to know about this research group that says 88%. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Kids are stupid, though, right? I mean, their friends to see it. I'm gonna go I mean, tell all my friends to watch Little Monsters. <laughs> Me too. And 83 percent of parents rated Little Monsters good to excellent. Do they all look like you? Only the good-looking ones. <laughs> <laughs> Little Monsters is the kind of entertainment you'll want to see, and now it's available on video cassette for 89.95. And this ghoulishly funny promotional campaign is sure to scare up rental excitement. First, consumers what? will be invading your store to play Dial M for Everything Monsters, was a sweepstakes. an interactive telephone game. By dialing 1-900-89-Maurice, they can participate in an incredible multi-level phone play adventure. They play Each it Each caller is eligible to win one movie. of 20,000 fabulous prizes. I bet this is rigged. incredible Black Knight 2000 full-size arcade pinball machine for their home. Ads will appear in... Like, remember the Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead contest? That, like, no oh, yeah. one would, could have ever won? Super right. team. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Super they team. also... They, they also talked about how they would promote this movie so that, hey, you're not on your own. We're going to promote this movie, so you'll rent a lot of these. Ads will appear in Super Teen, Teen Machine, and Loudmouth Magazines for a combined circulation of over two and a quarter and loud million. And Loudteen Magazine. <laughs> Who put this in my apple juice? It might even be you. Don't miss Little Monsters, now available on video cassette. Yep, it ended with a fat kid saying, who put piss in my apple juice? <laughs> and then the narrator goes, it might even be you. <laughs> so, who put piss in the apple juice? Yeah, okay. I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, what an unpleasant <clears throat> movie that uh, cost 90 bucks for each copy of Video Store Bought. But you know what? It worked on you, so they weren't uh, they weren't wrong. Yeah, well, I had my issue of Loudmouth Magazine. I'm paging through it. I saw it. Taron, what's his name in it from uh, Noah Smith? No, Taron Noah Smith in it, and yep. then I saw a full page ad for Little Monsters, and yeah, I was helpless. I had to rent it. Um, okay, all right. So I'm going to shift gears here a little bit. So for for the for raviolis, I pride myself on on showing stuff from our actual collection. You know, people send in links and stuff, and I try not to show those. I try to show because we get a lot of videos. Too, DHS. Too. So yeah. yeah, but Brad. Uh, Send this on Brad, an IMG miner. He sent me a link that I couldn't resist, and there's a, a backstory to it. That's it's dark. It's pretty dark. It's not as feel good as the other stuff that we normally show, and uh, but I think it's relevant that we we that I show this and, and we we can discuss it. Um, okay. All right. Here's 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 what Brad said. Brad said he goes. There's a comedy true crime podcast that I listen to called Small Town Murder, and they did an episode from Vermont earlier this year. Tragically, the co-host was murdered by his wife less than an hour after filming ended. What? And yes, they did two episodes of the show. The second episode, they they did this, they finished it, and then he got murdered an hour later after he went home. So he goes, if that's going to make it too dark for VCR party right away, I understand. But the video itself is gold. So this is one of those conundrums, you know, where it's just like there's this darkness, there's a murder involved, there's a sadness involved. But there's also a really good video involved here too. So hmm. um, that that's a conundrum, and I decided I would tackle it for this. Um, okay. It's a uh, it, Brad said it's a uh, about an hour of two retirees reading the newspaper on Vermont public access, and I think that's all you need to know. Okay. So here now is uh, what, what is it actually? It's called it's news to us. What do you guys think about the setup? I'm confused uh, whether the we're about to watch the podcast, the filming of the podcast. Okay, I'm glad show. I asked. Is this I'm a glad snuff film? No. What's <laughs> happening? <laughs> okay, I'm glad I asked. Uh, all right, so no, we're going to watch the actual public access show that they... covers the news about what's about to happen. All right. No, Actually. no, no. So, no, it was an hour after this episode 
aired that the co-host was murdered by his wife. Okay. So this is the last episode of this show ever. Okay. Now I understand. Okay. Is that cleared up? Okay. Yep. You got yours on? Okay. All right, here we go. Happy birthday, Clay. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to a new show. It's new stars. This is your host, Steve Merrill. I'm your co-host, I guess, Charlie Billis. We'd like to say this is the second shirt. episode. We hope you saw the first one because if you didn't, we're coming to your house and I'm going to cane you. In the meantime, here's the host. Okay, this uh, we're back. Uh, this is basically basically it's uh, it, it's kind of a, a general purpose news show for for stuff from uh, Vermont topics, uh, national topics, and international topics. You should be notified yeah. before large scale pesticide spraying <laughs> operations commence on lands at least a quarter of a mile away. How did she hit him? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's the guy on the right. He's the co-host. It's the guy. I think the guy on the left was the uh, host. Yeah. It doesn't right. say they're going to stop them from paying pesticides. No, but they'd but... like to know where they are. Yeah, That's yeah, right. great. Fine. No problem. Fine. We can manipulate the numbers. Yeah, we can manipulate the numbers. Uh, it, you know, it's funny that they mentioned it here. Yeah. Uh, tritium. Well, it works like this, man. They flip a coin and say, today, squirrel, tomato, hair pie. <laughs> oh, man. We'll cut that out. Hair pie. No, I, can't, I didn't say nothing bad. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> this is VCR party and... 20 uh, years. I mean, it's just our party tonight. Yeah. Right. Do, do, do you think the investigators watched this episode? Like, yeah, they do, probably had to. Yeah. They probably See had to there watch any clues it. or, yeah, clues. Do you think, do you think they a analyzed that hair pie line? Probably. Did you, hear, did you hear he's like, I flip a coin on one side, it's something on the other side, it's hair strudel. pie. And the other, hmm. then the other strudel. guy goes, it's strudel. Yeah. And the, and the, the host goes, well, we're going to have to cut that out of the episode because he mentioned hair pie. And he goes, no, no, it's not a bad word. So what? What other connotation of hair pie is there? An actual pie Steve? that uh, contains <laughs> hair in it. Steve, I'm looking in your direction because you're New England. I mean, these are your people. Is that a? Uh, I've only hair heard pie? the uh, the term hair pie used uh, in the graphic version. Revenge what, of the like, nerds? For what? For what? Be, uh, be more specific, Steve. <laughs> for pubic hair. Gotcha. All right, here we go. Where were we? So, anyways, uh, let's see. What did she have for pets? I forget the guy's name. Oh, what was that idiot's name? I kidnapped her. I, I have to. Uh, it's probably in there. I just forget. Myself. No, it isn't. Damn it. Uh, but anyways, she, but uh, that's it for this week's episode of It's News to Us. And uh, remember, <laughs> when the news breaks, we fix it. Absolutely. Get the duct tape out. Thank you. See you later. Bye. <laughs> there it is. That's wow. the last second episode and last episode of all wow. time. So thanks, Brad, for alerting me to that. Uh, yeah, tragic news about the the co-host, but uh, you know, you never know when you're gonna go. But I think he can go out with his head held high. I mean, <laughs> at least at least he wasn't a uh, half B during that. You know, <laughs> right? So, no, he, yeah, he knew not to wear a green shirt to the public access. Uh, show, yeah, so the host didn't know about that. What a weird so. story. That is such a strange thing. But, I'm gonna look uh, it up. What did, what, did yeah. he, what did I say it was? I forget what. Uh, Small the town podcast? murder. I think. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I'm gonna. I'm gonna listen to that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna switch gears again and talk about another movie. And this is a, a DVD that we have in the office, not a, a, a VHS tape, but it's for a guy um, that we first found out while doing a show in uh, Manchester, England. A filmmaker named Neil Breen from Las Vegas, who is uh, apparently made a millions in real estate. So he writes, produces, and stars in a series of sort of techno thriller movies, not techno thrillers, but I, I guess environmental message thrillers where he's always sort of a martyr figure. There's a lot of surreal parts to it. And he always writes sex scenes for himself with women. And the one we watched that night, Joe in Manchester was a, uh, called fateful findings. Our oh, yeah. buddy uh, Owen gave us a DVD of it. And I thought, uh, you know, none of these have been nominated for Oscars, but I think they should have because it's hypnotic. You can't not be glued to the screen during these uh, these movies. So here's uh, some highlights that I cut together from Fateful Findings. It's not bad cinematography. Mm -hmm. Opening scene of the movie. Hear me. 
Dylan? Dylan, what's going on? Talk to me. He's on the phone with his girlfriend. What are you doing home? You're supposed to be in a hospital. I let myself out. Help me. Help me. George's deathbed visions? <laughs> this whole movie is. <laughs> he always has giant laptops in every one of his movies. Jim! I he can't believe Lamborghini you could... that What's that? He got a Lamborghini for this scene. Yeah, I know. I think he's got money. He's He must have. I believe that's a Ferrari, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Same thing. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? Here's where they turn up the I'm heat. I'm done talking. Really? Guadino pillow over there. <laughs> the books could have stayed. <laughs> I cut the scene in half, by the way. <laughs> Who's the kissing us? Oh, this would be good. Some passionate kisses there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like how you would kiss your grandma. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is hard to watch. <laughs> This is painful. Be thankful I cut it down. Yeah. He's it's, in Washington at the end being applauded because he, uh, he was there actual Trump politicians. What? Was there actual nudity in that or was it mostly a... brain nudity? You see his butt uh, in a lot of it. You don't see any uh, female nudity in any of the movies, but OK. Neil Breen has a new movie that's playing film festivals uh, this year, and I'm really trying to get it in New York and have him out for a screening. So um, fingers crossed. Uh, I'm a big fan, and all of his movies are available at uh, Kim's Video in New York for rent. So, uh, yeah, his new movie is called Cade. So I'm very excited to see it. Is he uh, before Tommy Wiseau? I feel like he, I feel like he really yeah. got popular after The Room. I feel like people yeah. like, started he became a more of a not a household name but like you know after tommy wiseau people are like oh if you like that you're gonna love this yeah neil breen is he's pretty fascinating because like he clearly has a vision and his movies contain a lot of the same tropes and he's made more than i guess tommy Wiseau made a follow-up but yeah his first movie neil breen's was 2005 and i think the room was 2001 maybe so yeah he does he's he's on comes after the room but uh in my mind more fascinating than tommy he's but equally like, mysterious but i feel like the room didn't get popular until like 2008 or so yeah you know yeah, yeah there's a big entertainment weekly article about it and that's that's when that kind of blew up but um anyway i feel like you know we don't really dabble in movies so this might be old news to a lot of folks but i feel like if you if you're just on the found footage tip and don't know about some weirdo movie directors uh you know, for the Oscar week, we'll we'll include a little Neil Breen Primer in there. Worth checking out. Uh, yeah. All right, that's uh, that's our raviolis. Shows your raviolis. Shows your raviolis. Shows your raviolis. All right, let's get into some cyber videos, eh? Yeah.
these are videos we find on the internet and not on uh, physical media. And I wanted to play one that Wayney sent me. Wayney, who is going to determine my fate here in the coming weeks. So I thought it's Wayney her... just do, does Wayney just do your videos for you now at this point? Is she like your personal assistant who just like gives you the videos and then you don't have to do anything? Uh, yeah, no. like your grub child. Yeah, in yeah. a way. I don't have an intern, but Wayne uh, sends me a batch of videos every so often. And uh, I, this one's been in the hopper for a while, so I want to include it. It's just a, a short commercial called Only Eel Skin. Most fantastic eel skin sales. Eel Skin Only has bought from Going Out of Business Factory in Korea their entire stock of eel skin products and shipped here for immediate liquidation. See, these are already better Imagine flying windows than the ones. Wallet 990. Bifold 1090. Clutch is 1690. Ladies' bags $35. Clutch spelled wrong. Eel skin accessories at 40% off. Plus, much, much more at 40 to 50% off. This amazing sale is this Saturday and Sunday only from 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. at Holiday Inn in Johnson City. <laughs> so, Johnson City, I'm assuming Tennessee, I think. There is a company called Only Eel Skin having a sale. And, and that, uh, that's all vegan, right? <laughs> pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, pretty sure eels aren't animals. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, that one has been long overdue, but thought I'd show it for cyber videos this week thanks wayney thanks again wayney well she didn't send anything else this week so the, the flying windows no she didn't send that oh she didn't send that no, no we're just asking i was just saying oh. i was just asking her to count them oh I maybe see. you I owe me the apology <laughs> well no no wait oh somebody else sent that to you okay yeah All right. so somebody else did your work for you okay no cool that's great flying um, windows who's don't up find next? themselves who's up next I'll jump in because somebody else did my work. So uh, uh -huh. thank you to Morgan from uh, the W slash O slash C archive. Uh, you can find them on YouTube. And they sent this week's Jock Sham in. It's a Jock Sham. Jock Sham. Jock Sham. Jock Sham. Boring you with a signature draw. It's a Jock Sham. Jock Sham. Jock Sham. Jock Sham. This rap is done. Now it's over to you. I can't say it was one of my favorite players because he was before my time, but Bobby Orr, one of the great Boston sports sportsmen of all time. And... This Jock Sham, it's another one where I'm sure they got him for a day and he didn't want to do much filming. Uh, it's made in 1990, but you'll think it was made in the 70s. And my favorite part is, you know, you get a celebrity so that everyone can see them. This, you can't even tell it's him. Hat, sunglasses, and <laughs> he looked like he uh, was in the same lighting as the uh, Little Bigfoot too. <laughs> <laughs> same cinematographer. <laughs> yeah, same cinematographer. Uh, here we go. For over 40 years, the Atlantic Salmon Federation has worked to protect the Atlantic I mean, salmon. that could be anybody. Problems such as acid rain <laughs> and the net fishery still threaten the future of the salmon. I'm Bobby Orr, and I invite you to join the Atlantic Salmon Allegedly. Federation. Allegedly. Yeah, we can't right. do it alone. We need your help. <laughs> See, to witness protection? Join Bobby Orr. Like, <laughs> call 1-800-561-LEAP for more information on Atlantic salmon conservation. That's it. That yeah. was it. Short and sweet. <laughs> yeah. We got him for a minute. That Bobby or... uh, okay. Your guess is as good as mine. Was it uh, Bobby or was it Taryn Michael Smith from Home Improvement? What's his, what's his name again? Noah. Taryn Noah. Taryn Noah, Noah Smith. Yes, of course. It is, it is an impossible name to, to memorize. You, <laughs> you forget it after you do forget it after like five minutes. Yeah. Because it's like yeah, it's I've three only got names. the Noah port part. The first name and the last yeah, name. Yeah, no I got idea, Taryn. I got Noah. Oh. Yeah. I'll get it by the fifth video we show of him. Uh, George, what about you? What do you got? Well, I'm returning to a corner that is, I think, a classic by now. It's public service announcements that are unnerving and confusing. I call it freaky PSAs. Today, we're going to look at the uh, jingle edition. Yes. That's a great intro. I think I love you. Ooh, I think I love you. With your funny hat and frizzy hair. I love the manly way you say it. But I find what matches away. I think I love you, Smokey Bear. <laughs> wow. George Deathbed Visions. I've got to go to gyms to finish your science project. That's a good lie. 
When you tell one lie, it leads to another. When you tell two lies to cover each other, then you tell three lies. Oh, brother, you're in trouble up to your ears. So you tell four lies to try to protect you. Then you tell five lies, so folks won't suspect you. Then you tell six lies, and then you collect a life full of worries and fears. Soon you lie and lie without me. Like the song. This scared the hell out of me when I was in fifth grade. I never saw this. Is it just about not lying? When you lie, you're closing the door on everything good. I'm not going to Sims really. I just want to go to a movie. I'll never lie again. Honest. Good. Are you all right? There's no such thing as a good lie. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. The Mormons. Problems tougher than the ones you've got now are the ones you'd face on the street. If you're thinking about running away, don't. Call Rapline instead. Stay with if your you're abusive on the street family. Now and you need a friend, call Rapline. They can help. Why trade tough problems that can be solved for even tougher ones that can't? I like I like uh, Del Shannon's song with that drum beat underneath. The, yeah, uh, the electronic drum kit there behind it. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just this guy. This guy is a uh, terrifying. What's his yeah, story? That's scary. Well, I want a spinoff. Cord? Yes, the P- PSA spinoff. Uh, I don't know. Something to consider. The the Church of Latter Day Saints. They did a lot of those commercials. I remember. I remember yeah. they were always on like during Heathcliff or something. Yes. You know, like, yeah. Well, there was a lot of sin back then. Now, not so much. I like how they tackle just lying in yeah. general. You like know? you open the door to your house and there's like 10 guys with flashlights. It's scary. Yeah. And I as a giant that. liar myself, it was, you know, <laughs> I knew I was in trouble. There's right. a new new trope I noticed, too, that it's grocery sack carrying moms. That was, I feel like, every PSA, <laughs> every sitcom, it's always a mom coming home. Mr. T's be somebody. There's a yep. grocery sack carrying mom. Well, to, tonight also we had the overworked insurance working dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's uh, right. It's yeah. another those one. Those two together. New corners. Yeah. What do you yeah. have this week, Joe, for cyber videos? Uh, you know, it's the it's the first of the month, and we made this agreement that uh, every four weeks I could show uh, Daniel Songer, the worst uh, or, or best comedian on the internet, uh, depending on who you ask. Um, we... we uh, yeah, so uh, Tim Harrod, who does Bastard Tapes, he curates this. Ba- he calls it a baffling non-joke from Daniel Songer. You know what? I think it's working out, don't you think? I feel like every four weeks is yeah. a good amount to do it because you kind of look forward to it. And then you don't have to. I think for a while I was just going a little nuts with it. And I was playing it every single week. And I was probably <laughs> playing it a little too much. I got a little too power. obsessed. Yeah. yeah. A little too obsessed with it. And then everybody reined me in. And I, th- I think that we found a happy balance. I think even Songer haters probably appreciate this now and probably look forward to it. So here now is a baffling non-joke from Daniel Songer. Hey guys, do you know that uh, years ago, and I mean even today, even today you can go into some bars and they'll have a juke box, you know, a juke box, you know. And, of course, they're going to have those same old songs on it. The same old songs on it, man. But there was a time, you know, that there was this man. And he stood in front of the jukebox and played the same song over and over and over. I'm not kidding you, man. This guy would play the same song over and over and over and do you guys know what his name was his name was sam play it again sam play it again sam play it play it play it again sam that's what his name was man he 
played it over and over and over and over. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a non-joke. Yep. Because if he, if he kept playing it over and over, why would you say play it again? Wouldn't you say stop playing it, Sam? Hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. You're going to have to ask Tim or ask Songer, but he doesn't respond to our phone calls. So uh, I guess and, we'll never know. Do you think Songer had seen Casablanca or he just knew that reference? I think he just knew the reference. I don't think he'd seen the movie. Not a chance. All right. Um, all right. Yeah. Steve, how are you feeling on uh, on Songer? Like, I, I feel... Know that- I feel monthly is fine, but you know, quarterly might be even better. I mean, really, really, really make me wanna once every uh, four months. I mean, I feel like I'd really be hungry for it. While you were watching that last Daniel Songer, was there anything inside that that made you like kind of snicker, or chuckle, or like enjoy yourself or enjoy? Just. I mean, yes. I just you know, I felt like that was a uh, an amazing example of a baffling non-joke. So I was like, they really did nail the name. That's yeah. exactly what I thought. Yeah, Tim. No, Tim nailed it. Absolutely. I feel like it's like it's another monthly cycle that you don't talk about in Plague Company. You're just like, oh, <laughs> Uncle Daniel's coming to visit this week on VCR party, and you just kind of keep it discreet. <laughs> that's accurate. All right, that's uh, cyber videos, right? Nothing else. Yep. Okay. All right, now uh, is the time when we want to dive into some nice things. We are lucky enough to have a lot of talented folks send us uh, artwork. They get inspired by the show. And uh, Anthony uh, Gonzalez sent in something here. This is a pretty cool cartoon he did. And uh, you can see that Joe's wearing a baby rapper T-shirt, a Batman hat. I have an elf hat on. And the shirt I'm wearing tonight is illustrated in cartoon form. Oh, so there it is. Yeah. Thank you, Anthony. For I like that. it. I, I, you know, I wish I actually looked like that. Same here. I wish yeah. I was far more cartoony. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, what other nice things we have? Oh, well, I want to show you some things. Uh, just I'm going to hold up. Uh, this showed up. I don't know who it was from. Somebody just sent it. And uh, Nick, we got two of them. One size extra large, one size medium. That means you and me. Look at this. Pasta Mania t-shirts. We got them. Wow. You know, two Pasta Mania t-shirts. I don't know who sent them. Um but thank you, whoever sent that, because we are going to wear these. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I will absolutely wear that. Hulk Hogan's short-lived uh, pasta restaurant in the Mall of America. <laughs> I'm pasta uh, depressive. It's the uh, <laughs> the other side of that. Of mania, you, yeah. By pasta. Oh, yeah, you're pasta depressive. Uh, by, yeah, 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 yeah. By pasta syndrome. Right. Um, I want to show this, too. Remember, uh, Nick, for your birthday, I called up. Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center, and they all wish oh, you yeah. a happy birthday. And then they asked for the address at the end, and it arrived. It's here. What do we have? Okay, so there's good stuff in here. There's really good gift stuff. Certificates, so gift certificates, gift certificates. <laughs> <laughs> here they they sent this. It's they call it Moon Shorts. They put a little post it on here. They call it oh. Moon Shorts, and I think I think this is probably uh, like shorts <laughs> that you would put on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish so I would put, have had that before my colonoscopy. I think. No, I think that's what it is. Like, look at, and then a there's flap. a little, there's a flap on the back, <laughs> yeah, that you can. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. No, it's it it sticks. It, it has sticks. a sticker on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but you we you could wear this like on a hot summer's day. You know, mm-hmm. you're you're out there playing some basketball with your with your buds. Mm-hmm. You know, you you toss on some moon shorts. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So I got, got next. Two... I got next. <laughs> 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 All right, so you had that. Uh, here's a brochure for Midwest Hemorrhoid yes. Treatment Center. Oh, yep. fantastic. I love With those the cards and there. everything. Yes, Does it exactly. have any information about suffering in silence in there? <laughs> well, hold on. I'm glad you asked, George. Um, this is uh, – okay, so first here, – here we have three pens. Oh. And this this will be for uh, – it says uh, Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. has the phone number and everything in case you want to call them up. Nick, I feel like you should call them up and thank them for like – all those years of, I feel like I, I need well, to hear I mean, from you. Yeah. What else do they have going on there? I was looking to give them a call. Well, just call them up. I mean, all these years of like wishing you a happy birthday, you should respond at some point. I mean, it's just kind of <laughs> awkward for me to be like, hey, has he called you yet? Or yeah, no? Yeah, put, oh, put okay. a lot of burden on you by demanding a birthday <laughs> wish from them every year. <laughs> I've been quite uh, an ogre. <laughs> all right. So, George and Steve, these are our pens, but Nick gets this one. Uh, <laughs> They put a post-it note that says singing pen. 
<laughs> push top. What? Push the top. Listen. No. Listen to this. Can you hear it? No. Well, it's, it's singing the Midwest hemorrhoid. What? How did they do it? I don't know. I, I don't know if they made it special for us or what. Oh, this my God. It's, it, hold on. You can't hear that? Oh. Yeah, there. We heard it there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so every time every time you click the pen on, yes, it, uh, yeah. So that's for oh you. my god, that but, is incredible. It, I mean, this is the most specific like present of all time, yeah. right? Yeah. Like yes. a, a pen that plays the Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center song whenever yeah. you hit it. Do they actually like? Is this their swag? No, I think they did it just for Nick. I really they, do. They must have made a custom pen. Now you gotta call them. You all have right, to you call have, them. Right, I will. Right now, of course, record that for everyone to hear. Right now, call them. That gave me um, an idea, though. You know how you could get those like things at Spencer's where you just a keychain that would say like "fuck you, you're a jerk." Yeah, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. We could do one of just VCR party catchphrases. Oh, sure. You know, nose yeah. and fully up anymore. You know, like it yeah, would yeah. have all those. Yeah. Hello, Melinda. We got it. I wonder if there's a company that would manufacture those for us. Well, I'll talk to my my friends over at Midwest Hemorrhoid Treatment Center. Better wow. yet, you should. Maybe you call them up and just you say, know what? "Hey, that'll thanks. be the this impetus. means the world to I'll me." I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Tim Harrod, um, who does uh, uh, turned us on to Daniel Songer, but also uh, does a, our audio podcast celebrating weird audio finds rather than video finds. Bastard Tapes has a new episode that dropped today, and it's all about fast food related songs. McDonald's, Wendy's, Burger King all had various promotional tie ins. Of course, the ALF records uh, from Burger King in the 80s. But um uh, this one, there's a video, uh, I guess it was somebody on YouTube playing those flexi discs that McDonald's gave out in 1988 for sweepstakes based on that menu song. And we had this record. You had to listen to it. And one lucky sweepstakes winner, if the people singing along got through the song without screwing it up, you would win, I don't know, two million bucks in fries or something. So. Here's, this is featured in the podcast, but there's so much more. Because if this class can do the McDonald's menu song all the way through, a listener out there is going to win a million dollars. Win a million dollars? Yeah. So let's try again. Big Mac McDeal to a quarter pounder with some cheese. Big Mac McDeal to a quarter pounder with some cheese. Filet of fish, a hamburger, a cheeseburger, a happy meal. Filet of fish, a hamburger, a cheeseburger, a happy meal. You're on a roll. Keep going. McNuggets, tasty golden french fries, regular or larger size of salad, chef or cotton or chicken salad, oriental, baby crackers, thing with nothing, hot cakes and sausage, maybe biscuits, bacon, egg and cheese, and sausage, Danish hash browns, two and four dessert, hot apple pies, and Sundays, three varieties of sausage, cold three kinds of shakes, and chocolate, eat your cookies, and the drink, and cola, diet, coke, and orange, drink, yeah, and spice, and coffee, and cake, and milk, also an orange, and salami, and milk, and milk, and milk, we're so sorry. The person listening to this record didn't win the big prize, but tell him to check out those coupons. Check out those coupons. Uh, Tim revealed that the guy who won, um, I guess he died eventually, and that the record was not recovered. So no one has ever heard what the winning record sounded like, except for that guy who won. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a fascinating walk through promotional tie-in recordings. Uh, in in this week's episode of Bastard Tapes, give it a listen. It's fascinating. Oh, he's the best curator of this kind of stuff too. He does extensive mm -hmm. research on this wonderful bullshit. Um, let's see what else do we got on here. Nice uh, things, nice things. I can talk uh, about some new things in our our uh, store. So we're uh, I mentioned up top, but we're gonna hit the road very soon. Not only are we going to be in Pittsburgh with Volume 10, but then our movie, uh, the documentary they made about us and our lawsuit is uh, going on a national tour. So you can see we're going to be in Cleveland at the Cleveland Film Festival. Then we're doing Volume 10 again in Arlington, Virginia. But then uh, we're going to be in uh, starting in L.A. for two nights, then San Francisco, Denver, Chicago, Austin, Raleigh, New York City, Brooklyn, Madison, Wisconsin will be at a film festival there on the 18th. And then, um, yeah, and then Volume 10 again in Schenectady. So busy month in April, uh, but we invite you to come see us and come see uh, uh, Chop and Steel. And also in Pittsburgh, uh, that's very close to where um, Lenora from Midnight Rental lives. So she is going to join us for that, do an opening set. And we've added to our store, you know how you can – do like rent a friend you can rent us to do a personal message for saint patrick's day for example or for a friend's birthday uh well we've expanded we have rent a mark borchardt 
from American Movie. Uh, he'll uh, create a message for you. We have Jack Rebney, who how old is he now? Ninety. He's ninety three, but he 93. just he, he well he's he had to go to the hospital recently, so he's going to be slow to respond to those. So if you want, I mean, go ahead and order one, and hopefully eventually he'll get to it. But he's he's an old guy, so yeah. uh, but he you know they they have the means to do it. So yeah, here's a Dark Lord Blood. It's the actual guy. We'll growl for you. Rem Lazar, Jack Mulcahy, he will do it. And now we have Rental Lenora. So if you're a fan of uh, Midnight Rental. Um, she'll show off some VHS movie clips and horror clips from the set, the amazing video store set of that show. So it's a new thing in our story you can check out. Um, all right. What else is there? Oh, 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 okay. So remember Jim's coins in Hilldale, the, the jingle that, uh, we all got obsessed with for mm -hmm. about like six months last year. Um, if, if you're not familiar, I'm just going to play the, the original song here for you. This is just the jingle. Jim's coins in Hilda. Madison. It, that ends every single show. It's a, a jingle that we were brought up with. We've heard it for, uh, I feel like, our entire lives. If you watch an episode of Jeopardy, there was a Jim's coins in Hill, Hilldale jingle at some point. So uh, recently, we put up 10 minutes of all the jingles with the videos on our YouTube page, uh, the Found Footage Festival channel. You can listen to over 10 minutes of, of those but even more ambitious, Chris, uh, who's a who's also an IMG miner, um, made a, a band camp for the Jim's Coins remixes. It's Jim's Coins in Hilldale dot bandcamp dot com. OK. And and so you, you can go there. You can hear all 19 of the songs. There are 19 songs. And uh, man, we. we, we it's inspired me. We got to reach out to Jim because remember at in, in Madison, Jim was there and we met him and he, he loved the fact that we were talking about a store, of course. Mm -hmm. And we, we presented the idea. Can you come on and be the judge of all these these 19 remixes of your Jim's Coins in, in Hilldale uh, songs? And he said, yes, I will. And so like this lit a fire under me. We got to do this soon. Just like the toilet. We got to do uh, <laughs> the Jim's Coins. Uh, yeah, this with summer. Jim as judge this summer. Well, yeah, this yeah this summer we got a busy April, but maybe in May, uh, maybe in June. Yeah, so um, yeah, check that out. Jim's Coins in Hilldale dot Bandcamp dot com. Thank you, Chris, for putting this together. Well, I've got a little update about uh, the Atlas Butler commercial, which I believe started out during a jingle tournament. We like the 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 song the, mm -hmm. that at the end of it. And there's been a lot of controversy about uh, what the young man, the, the kid in this video, is saying. There's um, no controversy. Oh, yeah? But, well, we, let's I think watch we the video. I, I think we tried to create controversy, but then everybody was like, no. Well, Tim tried to create it. Yeah, but well, yeah. Let's take a look. At Atlas Butler, we get all kinds of great letters from customers, and we really appreciate them. My son was wheezing and sneezing. Our pediatrician suggested getting our ducts cleaned and even told us to call Atlas Butler to do the job. As soon as our ducts were clean, Devin stopped sneezing and coughing. My nose is for yuck anymore. A clear nose? That's just great. Atlas Butler is at your service call. Where's the cover? I'm not saying it. Okay. Well, I got a message. <laughs> Tim thought it was my nose doesn't feel yucky anymore. Okay, so let's let's yeah. read this text I got. Is this from Tim? No. Okay. I've studied the Atlas Butler tape. The kid is trying to say my <laughs> nose didn't feel yucky anymore, which would be a perfectly plausible line to write for a kid to say in a commercial. Sure. However, he failed to enunciate it properly and deleted the second syllable in yucky. Prior to that, he is definitely trying to say didn't, but he ran together the ending sound in nose, a Z sound, and the D in didn't. And it sounds more like isn't. It's a great flub. That's my professional opinion. That's all I'm doing. That's from viewer Jonathan <laughs> Rob. Wow, speech therapist. <laughs> yes. He has a certificate of clinical competence in speech language pathology, a uh, master's oh. degree. Um, he later wrote to me, um, yucky anymore is tough to say for a kid, try it yourself. The natural inclination is to delete the weak <laughs> syllable, the E of yucky. <laughs> okay, so, but that doesn't explain feel. My nose doesn't feel and full of. 
It still sounds like full of. To we'll me. have to have him on. All we'll right. have to have. He's going to bring a, a model of the larynx. He'll please. I, I yeah. hate to ask, but can you play it one more time? Just just the kid's line. We don't have to watch the whole commercial. And turn it just down so slightly. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say turn it up a little bit. Oh. Uh, I'm uh, sure he didn't want to watch the yawn, Steve says. <laughs> don't encourage him. Okay. I'm gonna start actually, at, I, I, I wouldn't mind watching the yawn, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're going we're, we're gonna to start with the yawn. So, so many, by, 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 the first comment we got when we posted 10, 10 minutes of Jim's Coins remixes, guys, there are other commercials. You're, this is overkill. You're beating it to death. And I'm like, have you seen this show? <laughs> You know Words what we do, do, right? We beat uh, things to death. We'll do 10 minutes of this yawn. Okay. As soon as our ducks were clean, wait, wait, wait. Devin... Can you have, oh, so what are, we, what are we listening for? The the possibility that it could be my nose doesn't feel yucky anymore? My yours didn't my... feel yucky anymore. The what? My yours didn't... <laughs> my yours. My, my nose, nose didn't, <laughs> didn't feel yucky anymore. And these are common thing errors that kids with speech pathologies make and this is coming from an actual speech therapist right yes. so okay yeah. all right you gotta listen i guess all right, we might we go back to the yawn okay. <laughs> do the job as soon as our ducks were clean devin stopped sneezing and coughing okay. my nose didn't feel yuck anymore my nose didn't feel yuck anymore i'm really hearing it that time didn't feel yuck anymore. Yeah. Yucky, but he drops the Y. His right. His nose didn't feel yuck anymore. Yeah, I think that's that's probably it. My nose didn't feel yuck anymore. I'm going I'm going with Jonathan Robb, who also <laughs> happens to be the bassist for Lester Luster and the Molasses Disaster. Oh, oh you're oh, running oh, a ringer. ringer for but, you know, he wrote to me unsolicited. Mm. But I'm he, going to bring my he, sister, who is also a speech therapist. Oh, yes, I'm going to solicit her and get her opinion. <laughs> bring the brightest minds in speech pathology to figure out what that kid <laughs> to the is most saying. important question in well pathology. He, he, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that that's probably right because the director clearly was just like that's good enough because the director yeah. clearly allowed a yawn to happen in his commercial. <laughs> that's the, probably the last thing you want to happen in a commercial is a yawn. You don't want to make people tired while they're watching your commercial, but he allowed it and he didn't I, do another yeah. take. There was no coverage, apparently. No yeah. footage left over to... You know, I, edited, I edited out a dozen yawns from this episode of this show. <laughs> I mean, you don't want them in the final product. But... I mean, <laughs> how, how many yawns is Clayton up to in this episode I so mean, far? Would you... yeah. <laughs> he, he just fell asleep. That's the only time he stopped. Uh, good uh, detective work, George. I think it is. My nose didn't feel yucky anymore, and the kid just like flubbed yucky and said yuck. Is yeah. it a flub if he's physically incapable of making saying it correctly? <laughs> it's not like a mistake. I he's... still hear it isn't, but I don't know. Mm. Right. Well, this debate will go on for at least a dozen more episodes. Steve, uh, what are you, Steve? What are you going to say at the end now? Uh, are you going to change anything up? Are you going to say oh, my nose doesn't feel like yuck anymore? Because that doesn't really make sense. I, my nose doesn't feel yucky no, my anymore. Nose, no, no, no. But what was the line? That Isn't full of yuck. Yeah, I don't think that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> but why we, that's why we thought it was funny. Now Steve's referring to himself in previous episodes. Yes. It's it's oh, not. He's himself. not referring to the commercial. I, well, I've 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 not bought onto this new line of thinking, so I am still in the. Oh, you're very conservative. You're very <laughs> liberal when it comes to Windows, but uh... <laughs> I'm one of those people who believe they know more than the speech therapist that's gone to school. As a <laughs> sibling fancy, rivalry. No, I heard fancy it. degrees. Yeah, no, I've studied nothing. <laughs> One more thing. We don't pitch it too often, but we have a Patreon where you can support everything we do and our other shows, Midnight Rental, Strange Tapes, and the podcast that we mentioned before. And uh, this week, if you're a patron at any level, even if you just join now for a dollar, you get um, – we're doing uh, $2 DVDs for two days. Yes. Uh, tom tomorrow and the next day, if you go to patreon.com slash Festival, not only do you get access to all this bonus content every week – where we watch too hot for YouTube clips like uh, Computer Escape Central Reality and stuff. Uh, but you'll get that, um, uh, oh, of course, voting rights to the tongue touching tongue mint. But now you're going to get uh, a link where you can get uh, $2 uh, DVDs uh, from our back catalog that I mentioned up top today. And like if you own a store, order this because then you can like sell them for 10 bucks and you can like make some money off of it. Wow. I don't know. That's not like, bad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like you, we're, we're making you money. So like, yeah, $2. DVD sale, everything must go. We're going to switch over to Blu-rays pretty soon. And uh, yeah, we're clearing house. Just for the Patreon, Melinda. Do we have a $1 and up? 
Yeah, is that a you, possible? you can join for any level. You could just chip okay. in a buck a month to help us out, and you know, yeah, yeah, and you then don't you get can access get the whole to deal. some of the bonuses. But yeah, you'd get access to that. So, so do that. And for EP mode, which is if you're a ten dollar and up, we do a bonus episode. We had a special request to watch How to Meet Women in St. Louis, which is a real video we found. Yeah, but that, but that, I mean, that feels like a continuation of February. We're into. I, I think March, that's where the idea you know? came up, but still, I mean, you know, I, this I, is for I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea because I love this this uh, this video. I, actually, the video is, is is really dumb because they're they're trying to be funny throughout the whole thing. Mm. But there's let, let me just play one scene here that I think will just like it, 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 here it is. It, it, it's gold. It's pure gold. One thing that I hate the most is when you're out with a guy having a good time and he gets a little bit too drunk and embarrasses the shit out of you. <laughs> so that's just a little taste <laughs> of what you'll get from How to Meet Women in St. Louis. But I don't, I don't it's, it's another confusing video because I think they're trying to be funny with it, but they're trying yeah. to give you real information. You know, yeah. we've seen this type of video a million times. So yeah. uh, it'll be a fun one to watch. Okay, fantastic. Uh, good episode. What are we going out on tonight? Um, let's go out on some Jim's Coins uh, remixes. So uh, the the guy Chris who who uh, uploaded all the to the Bandcamp all the Jim's Coins remixes. He's also a musician, and uh, I think eventually he's going to do a sellout, Steve. And so we'll we'll find out more information about where you can listen to his music. But he put together. Uh, a fantastic Jim's Coins in Hilldale remix, and we're going to go out on that. So here's the thing: if we had been prepared, we could have done better. We'll be right back right after these uh, right after these words. Once again, happy birthday, Clayton, uh, from Sally and Benito. My nose isn't full of yuck anymore. <laughs> Let's face it: in this job, I see a lot of penises. Jim's Coins in Hilldale. <laughs> Dr. Selner will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a My nose is for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Triodal. Tinkerbell. We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polstead, the real great guy. Nice, nice. Yeah. Goodbye. Jim's coins in Hilda.